Remember when Ahab died, it was a random arrow that struck him through his armor? Well, that happened while he was at war, and he was at war with the help of Jehoshaphat. Ahab kind of threw Jehoshaphat under the bus in that he disguised himself, Ahab did, letting Jehoshaphat run about not disguising that he was king. And the people that they were fighting against, their plan was to go directly for the king. When they saw King Jehoshaphat, they thought it was Ahab. And it was only when Jehoshaphat cried out to the Lord that it was found out that it was Jehoshaphat, so they relented from chasing him down, and Jehoshaphat's life was spared. Jehoshaphat's known as being a good king, so what's he doing running around with this evil king? After he comes home from doing what he can to help out this evil king, which you know how we are as Christians, a lot of times we find people who are evil, and instead of hating them, we try everything we can to walk down a road where we don't slip into sin, yet we can bless them, hopefully showing them love and support in an effort to bring them to an understanding of God's love. I believe that's where Jehoshaphat was, but as a result, that always puts us in a place where we're vulnerable. And here it says, Then Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, returned safely to his house in Jerusalem after the battle. And Jehu, the son of Hanani, the seer, went out to him and said to King Jehoshaphat, Should you help the wicked and love those who hate the Lord? Therefore the wrath of the Lord is upon you. Nevertheless, good things are found in you in that you have removed the wooden images from the land and have prepared your heart to seek God. That's a stark contrast, isn't it? We've got Ahab, and we know how heavily he and Jezebel relied on their idol worship versus Jehoshaphat who was alive during the same exact time and instead of relying on idol worship he's tearing down all of the idols in Judah Ahab being the king of Israel who is very far back so you've got these two kingdoms who are very opposite and then Jehoshaphat comes to help Ahab so there's a little bit of the setting and here's really what I want to focus on what did Jehoshaphat do when God says, hey, God's wrath is upon you? What action did he take? So Jehoshaphat first, he brought the people back to the Lord, God of their fathers. Then once he had the people back, he set judges in the land throughout all the fortified cities of Judah, city by city, and he said to the judges, Take heed to what you are doing, for you do not judge for man, but for the Lord, who is with you in the judgment. Then he kind of did the exact same thing, not just in Judah, but in Jerusalem, a very special place, the, the capital of Judah. In Jerusalem, he takes Levites specifically and places them as judges. The Levites, the priests, as judges. Who's a priest that you know that's a judge? And how is... Jehoshaphat and his righteousness and then the Lord's warning and then what he did all connected together. You see, he took the idol worship away from the people. Then God could see that the spiritual things, the spiritual realm, realm was cultivated, so to speak. For idol worship to take over again but he knew that he could trust Jehoshaphat he had a relationship with God so he warned him and told him hey I like what you're doing and those actions they put God's rulings God's laws as the ultimate authority in Judah and what resulted there that caused it so that evil was shunned and scorned and punished and goodness, God's goodness, His standards were encouraged. They actually grew closer and closer to God. So how can that information be uh, something that brings us edification? We obviously don't live in a nation where God's rules are always the thing that are um, held as the standard. 
but we can live our lives. We can change the way that we live, our hearts, to make that change for God and the way that we live around others, even when the going gets tough. And you know what happens when we do that? First, it's a battle, but eventually, if the timing is right, God's not just doing that with individuals, but he's doing that with individuals all over the place. And then the hearts of the people who are close with God begin to reflect in the way the society acts. That's why he tells us that if we, he's not telling the heathen, he says, if my people repent, then I will heal their land. And when we're talking about repenting, we're not talking about turning away from some evil thing. Of course that's going to happen, but don't focus on what you're turning away from. Focus on what you're turning towards and walking towards. As you're walking to God, expect that He's going to change your standards and your ways to reflect His standards and His ways. And then you'll find yourself fulfilling your purpose, the why of why He made you to reflect His image better and better. He never changes, friends. He's the same God from yesterday, today, and forever. God's goodness is good, and it's severe. Don't forget about the severity of God. It is judgment and mercy that brings us closer to Him.